All right, so we are on representing real-world situations through linear systems. So this is our first day of this. Learning goals for this lesson. I can write a system of equations that model a real-world situation and write a system of inequalities that model a real-world situation. So we're doing two different things over three problem types of problems. Um, and let's just get right into it. So just first of all, system of equations, just so you know what they are when we're talking about them. Um, a system of linear equations or linear inequalities are a collection um, of linear equations or inequalities that involve the same set of variables. For example, uh, if you had a system with x and y variables, these variables will have the same value in every equation or inequality that is part of that system, meaning they're going to represent the same thing. Um, and you, you would, if you were going to plug in a number, it would make both equations or inequalities true. And then finally, if when you're writing a system based off of like a word problem, you want to make sure that each of your variables do represent the same thing in each of your equations of your system. So you can't have x, uh, x represent uh, something in one equation and then represent something completely different in the other. So be very aware of that. First example. Okay, you and your brother go to Foot Locker and buy some sneakers. You buy three, you buy three pairs of shoes and two pairs of socks and you spend $78. Your brother buys two pairs of the same shoes as you and four pairs of the same socks and he spends 60. We need to write a system of equations that model this real world situation. So you're going to write one equation for you, one equation for your brother. So start off with you. And I've kind of color coded this to make it a little bit easier. So you buy three pairs of shoes and two pairs of socks and spend $78. Okay, so we're going to write an equation based off of that. So right off the bat, I would say go ahead and make x equal your shoes or whatever variable you choose. In this, I'm using x and y. And y represent your socks. Okay, and that's, you know, number of shoes, number of socks. So for you, you buy three pairs of shoes. So 3x, okay, and then two pairs of socks. So we'd be adding 2y, and it equals the total amount that you spent, which is $78. We're going to do the same thing for your brother. So your brother buys two pairs of the same shoes as you and four pairs of the same socks and spends $60. So two pairs of shoes, so this is going to be 2x because two pairs of shoes and x is the number of shoes four pairs of socks, so the four in front of the Y. And that equals $60. And that's all you have to do is just write those two equations out. They're going to be changing up as far as not going to be necessarily that easy every time. You're going to have to do a little bit of thinking. So we'll go ahead to the second example. Mrs. Terpster brought her first hour donuts and hot chocolate. Each donut was 75 cents and each cup of hot chocolate was $1.40. Her total before tax came to $43.20. She bought a total of 42 items. How many donuts and cups of hot chocolate did she buy? So in this one, again, we're going to write one equation for the cost of the items and one equation for the combined amount of the different items. So we've got the donuts being 75x, cup of hot chocolate was $1.40. Y, Because we have x as the uh, number of donuts. and y as the number of cups of hot chocolate. So we'll just put number of hot chocolate. All right. And that's one equation, and she spent 43.20. So now the next one, notice we don't have like a similar situation. Now we just are told that she bought a total of 42 items. But if you look, X is the number of donuts, and X, Y is the number of hot chocolate. So when you combine those two, you get 42. Fairly straightforward. Um, if you were to go through and solve this, um, it does ask how many donuts and cups of hot chocolate did she buy. Um, we can go ahead and try and solve it. We're going to get into solving them um, a little bit later. So I'm not going to cover that now. Right now I just want you to focus on writing the equations. But what you would do is try and cancel out one of the variables to solve for the other. Um, we've kind of touched on it before, but we'll focus more on it in a little bit. But anyway, so that would be the answer if we were just asked for the equation, for the system of equations in this. And then finally, our last example. 
uh, we have a different again a different situation because this is an inequality so gummy bears cost 475 a pound okay so that would be 475 and I use G this time so that would be pounds of gummy bears and then Hershey Kisses cost 315 a pound so I'd use K for not for uh, pounds of Hershey Kisses I'll just write kisses so we can save some time here and then we can spend no more than no more than so here's an any there's a tip off that it's an inequality we've got no more than. that doesn't say you can spend exactly twenty dollars but you can't spend more than twenty dollars all right so we're gonna say that this amount has to be less than the twenty dollars we have if we had it facing the other way we'd say we could spend at least twenty dollars but that's not the case this amount has to be less than or equal to the twenty dollars now we need at least eight pounds in all. So this is kind of like the last one where we're just going to add the G and the K. And again, we need at least. So this amount has to be greater than eight. Okay, because it's at least. So we've got like at least. Okay, that means that you're going to have that symbol. No more than. It's going to have that symbol. And you're going to, we'll go through and we'll cover more of the kind of like um, contextual and verbal clues that can help you figure out which symbol is which. But that about covers it for this lesson because we're just writing the inequalities or the equations um, to get you practicing before we have you solve them. So, um, as always, if you have any questions, any confusion, make sure you are asking those questions in class. All right, you guys have a good one. Take it easy.